Number three, balance the following equations. And then they give us our equation as PCl5, which is a solid, plus H2O, which is a liquid, and that will yield POCl3, which is a liquid, and HCl, which is aqueous. Okay, so we need to just balance this reaction. Uh, the first thing is, is that they don't give me a lot of room to put my coefficients in the front, so I'm just going to quickly rewrite this. So we have PCl5. I'm not going to put the states because when you're balancing, that has nothing to do with it. So I have PCl5 plus H2O, and that will yield POCl3 plus HCl. And if I can, I will just maybe center this a little bit. Okay, perfect. So a lot of students get confused with balancing. However, have no fear. We got this. What I like to do is I like to always write a chart. Write the chart when you're beginning to learn this, and then you won't need the chart anymore. But for now, we're going to just make a chart. And what we do is we make a two-tier chart, and we state that the reactants is on the left side, and the products are on the right side. Now, the reactants, just like I said, they are the left side of the yield, the arrow. These are your starting materials. So I have two compounds reacting, and I will form, in this case, two products. That's the final stuff. Now, when you're using this chart, all we have to do is we just have to list the specific elements, not the compounds. So let's see, I have a P, that's phosphorus, I have a Cl, that's chlorine, an H, and an O. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just list them as I see them. I like to go from left to right. So that's why I like to say P, Cl, H, and O. And then what you're going to do is just so that you don't get confused, whatever you write down here, literally just replicate it on this side. So P, Cl, H, and O. Now we're going to go back to the equation and just mark down how many I have of each. So let's work on the reactant side first. I had one phosphorus, right? There's a secret one here. So I'm going to put a one where my phosphorus is. I go to the next guy. I have five chlorines and this five only goes to chlorine. It does not go to phosphorus. So I have five chlorines. I move on to hydrogen. I have two hydrogen, right? That two goes to the H. So that's a two. And then I have one remaining oxygen. So I just put a one here. I do the same thing for this side, but just make sure that you're going in order. The order is going to be a little bit uh, messed up for the products, but you'll, you'll see. So on this side, I got to look at my phosphorus. I have a P here. There's only one of them. So I'm just going to put a one here. Now we move down to chlorine. Okay, so now I have a Cl here and a Cl over here. Now let's see. I have three chlorines here, and I only have one here, right? Three literally plus one would get me a total of four. So on this side, I have four total chlorine. Pick up with the hydrogen. I have only one hydrogen on my reactant, on my product side, so I put a one here. Put that one right here. And then oxygen, this is the only oxygen here, so I have one of them. And now it's easy to kind of see what we need to balance. As of right now, the phosphorus looks like they're balanced, one for one. The chlorine, eh, not really, five and four. The hydrogen, not balanced, but the oxygens are balanced. Now, what we gotta do is we just have to look at the ones that are easy to balance. On the chlorine side, I have five chlorines and four chlorines. Can I easily turn a four into a five? Eh. No, right? 
And just know that you always go up in number, never go down. So you always look at the lower number and try to match it with the higher number. But as far as hydrogens go, I have two hydrogens on the left or the reactant side, and I have one hydrogen on the product side. Can I make a one turn into a two by multiplication? Sure, I can times one by two to get me that two value, right? But now what does that really mean? You can only add uh, coefficient values, which means that you can only add big numbers in the front. I can't put like a two here or a three here or a four here. They have to be the big numbers in front of the actual compound. So I need to get it to be a two. So I will put a two in front. So that's going to change that number. However, you have to be fair. Whatever you multiply that one, this two has to go to all of the elements in that compound. So I actually have to multiply it by the chlorine as well. So let's change the hydrogen first. I'm going to change it into a two. So that checks out. But now I have to change my chlorine number. But remember, there was a total of chlorines here as well, right? There's still three chlorines here, three plus, literally plus, and then how many chlorines here now? Two times one. So there was two. Oh, and look at that. That equals five. So this chlorine number is now a five. And look, they are balanced, right? Five and five. So even though I wasn't balancing for chlorine, I still was able to balance it out. And all of our numbers now check out. One for one for phosphorus, that checks out. And one for one for oxygen. So guys, this was the only thing that we had to do. We just had to stick a two right in front of the H2O. All the other subscripts get a one in front. Okay, or you can just leave it like that, but just know that there's one of these guys, right? I, even though it looks like zeros, but one, right? One, one, and one. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully this helped you out. Remember to just make this little chart for yourself for balancing. It makes life much more simple. Um, stick around. We're going to do the next question in this set. And I'll see you in the next lesson, all right? Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.